Good evening folks and welcome to this week's episode of Beer Rating with Sean Connors. This week I have a beer from Belgium. As you can see the beer is Tepeler and basically doing a, Google, a quick Google translation on the beer it's basically Knights Templar. That would be the translation. Um, there's a lot of information on the on the label however none of it's in English so I had to Google it and there's not a lot of information I could get. I know it's a Belgium ale. Now a lot I was going to say the majority, but I'll say a lot of, beer, of Belgian beers are normally lagers, but this one's a male. Belgium's probably, in my opinion, and I, I would say most beer experts, is one of the main beer countries. I mean, if you think of France, you think of wine, you think of Cuba, you think of cigars, you think of Belgium, a lot of beer drinkers, people in the business, they think of beer. So there you go. And this one is also bottle conditioned. And basically what that means, it um, does a second fermentation in the bottle, so just before, when they bottle it, they add a little bit of yeast, yeast in it so it continues to ferment. And with that normally, from my understanding, you'll get a little bit of extra carbonation when you pour the beer because it goes through a different fermentation. Um, this one, my understanding, the beer itself has been around for quite a long time, however, the current recipe, this one, is actually probably a couple of decades old. And it's, the brewery is Corson Dork Brewery. That's who, I'm trying to get the proper wording for this. How do they say it on the bottle? It says, Brewed for Brewery Corson Dork. As I said, there's not a lot of English, but that's a little bit of the English that is on it. It's brewed for them, but it's brewed under license by another brewery. So there you go. But the Corson Dork beers, they've been around, I think, since 1388. This is just one of their beers. So we'll pour it up, and then we'll go from there. As I said, I couldn't get a lot of information on the beer itself. I'll give my glass a quick cold water rinse, as per usual. And once again, that's just to cool down your glass rather than having it in the freezer, which they don't recommend. Also, if there's any dust or anything, it's just another uh, step in the cleaning process of the beer. This one's a copper ale, or also you might know it as amber ale. Wow, quite a bit ahead. I might have poured that exactly correct, but I did have it on an angle and everything else. But as I said, it's with the second fer with the bottle of conditioning, you're going to get a second fermentation in the bottle. And from my understanding, that results in a little bit of extra carbonization. Um, not a lot of aroma from it. Typical, what I would say, a red ale aroma. Um, I'll just let that sit for a second. Just a little bit talk, talk about Belgium. As I said, Belgium is one of the big beer countries. For me, if I think of beer countries, I think of uh, uh, Britain, Belgium, Germany, and Czechoslovakia. And I'm sure there's others too, but that, for me, that would be the big ones. Now, Belgium is a beer country and they're actually they're heavily influenced by their neighbors and with that being said you think of Belgium it's only a small country and they're surrounded by some pretty big big players they're surrounded by France Germany and the Netherlands and what they say they said that the, the beer from Belgium is actually influenced by its neighbors and they say they get the French flair the German precision and the Dutch sturdiness just gonna try to get that. And like I said, they're they're definitely a country, but they've had their ups and downs. And uh, during the First World War, they were occupied by Germany, and a lot of the the Germans wanted a lot of the metals, specifically copper. So a lot of the vats and tanks that the breweries were using, they got confiscated, and as a result, a lot of the, a lot of the breweries closed down. Second World War, they knew what was coming, so actually a lot of the breweries. They actually buried their kettles because they knew if they were found, they'd be confiscated and breweries closed down. So they actually buried their kettles. So then when the war was ended, they were able to get up and running a lot quicker. So we've got quite a bit ahead. And what else can I say about Belgium? Belgium and their beers. Oh, another little interesting tidbit I came across. In ninth, a lot of Belgian beers, if what I've noticed, they're a little bit higher alcohol content that you might see elsewhere, and there's a reason for that. 
In 1919, the Belgium government actually banned the sale of distilled spirits in all bars and cafes because they wanted to give the beer industry a push. And that was actually in effect until 1984. So the Belgian breweries try to try to keep customers happy. They actually serve brewing beers with stronger alcohol content, and they end up with stronger beers. So there you go, a little bit about Belgium and their beers. Yeah. Like I said, it's not a strong aroma. Now, speaking of aroma, I'm just going to throw this out there too. A lot of people, you know, they drink out of the cans or the bottles, and a lot of times it's personal preference. They actually say that if if you can smell the thing you're eating or drinking, your taste buds are more activated. Smell has an influence on how you taste something. So when you're drinking out of a glass, you might find you're actually tasting the beer more. And the reason behind that is usually when you drink out of a bottle, I mean, small opening is going right there in your mouth. If you drink out of a can, the same thing. However, when you drink out of a glass, where's your nose? Your nose is actually almost in the glass. So you're gonna get, you're gonna smell it more and that will also influence your taste buds. Um, it's a good beer. Not a lot of aftertaste. And that could be... I find some beers I don't mind an aftertaste. Other beers I just, you know, I don't really look forward to an aftertaste. Especially a strong aftertaste. This one I'm not getting much at all. Jeez. Getting a taste there which I can't put my finger on. It's not a bad taste by any means. The first thing that came to my mind with the taste was when you taste a lot of wheat beers. There's a certain flavor to a lot of wheat beers. And from what I've noticed and from my research, banana and cloves, like it's not in your face or anything, but it's just it's a different taste. I'm kind of getting that here, but really, really, really minute. So I don't know if it's uh, the type of yeast that's being used, most likely. It's not strong. It's not in your face, but it is there in my opinion. Um, it's a pretty good beer. I'm enjoying it. Uh, my ratings, as usual, it's out of five, with a one being a drain pour don't like it, can't finish it, and pour it down the drain. A two being, yeah, I'm not a big fan, but I'll finish it because I don't want to waste a beer. A three being a good beer, a four being a very good beer, and a five being the best beer ever. For me to give this one a rating, it's a minimum three, it's a maximum four. I don't know if it's quite a four. And I think I'm going to play it safe there. I know roughly where I want it, so I'm going to play it safe and give it a 3.5. So that's in between a good beer and a very good beer. And this is actually one of the beers that my friend Mike gave me. I said a couple weeks ago, he uh, does a lot of travel. Uh, he found out about this channel. He said, drop by the house. I got a couple beers for you. And I got over there. He had a closet full of beers from around the world, and he stocked it with 12 beers. And this was one of them. And as I said, everything is... Um, I had to take a guess. I would say everything in on the bottle is Dutch, which kind of makes sense. So I believe the brewery is up towards Ant Antwerp, which is I'm pretty sure that's up around the border for the Netherlands. So, assuming everything in there is in Dutch, but I could be wrong. But it's like I said, it's a pretty good beer. I think I'm going to stick with my 3.5 for my Belgium Templaire. There you go, folks. That's my rating for this week. Hopefully you can join me next week, and we'll try another one of the beers that Mike gave me. There you go, folks. Until next beer, enjoy responsibly. Cheers.